Daniel Kuda will be reading one of his stories. He teaches in Core Natural Sciences, and his book, Bluffer's Guide to the Cosmos, is due to come out later this year, and you better all buy it. <laughs> um, when he's not teaching science, he's writing prose and poetry, and he frequents the Brookline Booksmith down in Brookline if you want to see him read. Um, so, if you're interested in seeing him, you should go. And now sit back and relax and listen to him tell you how to build a cloud. Clap! <laughs> Instructions on how to build a cloud. No one has successfully built a cloud. So this is your chance to make history. Apart from bringing rain and providing shade, clouds have myriad uses that have yet to be explored. You will be doing imaginative souls and humanity a favor. You have no reason not to build one. Before you start, make sure you're Mind is still. The clouds are ephemeral, and if you're not prepared to concentrate, you won't grasp their true nature. Drink a tall glass of water. Um, meditate. Go on vacation. Take early retirement. Do what it takes to clear your mind. Otherwise, your cloud will fail. Now think about the possibilities of your cloud. You must endow it with potential. Basho praised clouds for allowing moon viewers to relax. Kaladatha used a cloud to carry messages between distant lovers. A Hindu myth says clouds used to be the wings of mountains, which is why they still gather around mountain tops. Magritte painted clouds into the outstretched wings of a dove. Don't shortchange your cloud by thinking small. In that case, save yourself the trouble and just build a stone. <laughs> Imagine great things for your cloud. Give some thought to the type of cloud you want. If you don't plan it out, you'll just get an amorphous cloud. <laughs> your best bet is a standard cumulus cloud that has a wispy bottom and a cauliflower top. <laughs> this form has a good aesthetic and endless possible variations. You've got room to maneuver. Stratus, a thin gray sheet, is also recommended, despite its lack of individuality, because you can build one right in your kitchen. Rain clouds, such as cumulonimbus, are also worth considering, particularly because of their lovely sounding name. You could probably seduce someone just by whispering the word cumulonimbus. <laughs> if you hit her ear. But be aware that they require the most material and tread carefully because having the power to bring rain is likely to go to your head. <laughs> Other cloud types to be aware of, though considerably more challenging, are lenticulars, which look like flying saucers and require nearby mountain ranges, plus their attendant winds, for their ultimate shape. Or night-blowing noctilucent clouds that require a good quantity of meteoric dust to freeze water onto, so that they glow. And an altitude of 50 miles. Good luck with the scaffolding. Once you have your mind clear and some idea of your cloud's potential and shape, you're ready to start building. Here you have two convenient options. The first option is the Mayan shuk, a clay sauna barely big enough to sit in, commonly found in the mountain villages of Guatemala. Pour water over the rocks and collect steam in a large plastic bag. Better yet, use a parachute, so long as you can close the end. You may need to stay in the chute for several days to, to collect enough steam, so eat well beforehand and stay hydrated. <laughs> also, be sure your container is properly lined, or you'll come up with a condensed cloud suitable only for watering plants or making coffee. <laughs> time spent getting the lining right is time saved. Remember to concentrate on your cloud's potential and shape while you collect. Similar results can be obtained from low from saunas or Turkish baths. Don't forget to tip the attendant if you do this in Istanbul. The second option is the Murakami method, in which you create your cloud by boiling up some spaghetti. 
Use a big pot and start early in the morning. Again, capture the steam in a properly lined bag with your properly calm mind. Take deep breaths. Keep filling the bag until the spaghetti is al dente. You need to really pack the steam in if you want to build a respectable cloud. So be prepared to make several pots of spaghetti, maybe a few weeks worth. The noodles freeze well. Or invite the neighbors for dinner. Tonight's the last time you did that. Perhaps even make it like a church supper and invite the whole block. It's for a good cause. Once you have your bag of steam, keep it warm with aluminum reflectors and redirected sunlight, or you'll have a watery mess. You can do some initial shaping, but most of that will be done on site before you release your cloud. <laughs> Spend some time investigating good release sites. You want a reliable updraft of warm air. If you release your cloud and it falls to the ground, you've made fog. <laughs> Not what you were aiming for. One good location is the ramparts of the fort at Jodhpur, India. The sounds of the entire city, from the clang of hammer on metal to the gossip of the washing women, well up from below, so you know there's a good updraft. Other places may be suitable too. Try Mongolia, for example, in the summertime. Those steps must be good for something. <laughs> when you're ready to release your cloud, remember all the possibilities you find for it and your thoughts about shape. This is the moment of truth. Be still your mind and heart. Open the bag and let the cloud out. Don't force it. Patience is key. Here's where a parachute comes in handy because the much larger opening. Whisper to it about seeing great palaces, glittering cities, palm trees swaying on tropical isles. Clouds are often reluctant to be solitary sojourners, so coax gently. Be sincere. In an uncertain world, you only want the best for your cloud. <laughs>